Welcome to a crisp and cool Athens, Ohio. 44 degrees and no better time and no better place for some March baseball. It is the Ohio Bobcats once again looking to defend Bob Wren Stadium after coming up victorious last weekend in a 2-1 series win over the Bowling Green Falcons. They welcome one of the Max premier opponents today in the Central Michigan Chippewas. I'm Ethan Sargent, and I'll be taking you through today's action. We've got nine innings, maybe more, who knows, of phenomenal Mac play. And it should be a fun one here from Athens. Let's run you through the lineups before we get going. Uh, obviously, Ohio will be in the field, so let's run you through the fielding arrangements for the Bobcats first. Pitching today for the Bobcats, number 30, Luke Osen. He's got a 5.82 ERA on the season, a 1-0 and record. And going through the rest of the infield, catching today, number 10, Mason Minzy. At first base, number 5, Alec Patino. Second baseman, number 11, Billy Adams. Uh, third baseman, number 2, Colin Kasperbauer. And then at shortstop, you've got number 1, Nick Dole. And then maining the outfield, you've got number 18, Gideon Antle. Uh, in center, you've got number 7, A.J. Roush. And then at right field, number 26, Will Sturek. And leading things off for the Chippewas, number 10 shortstop Justin Simpson. And let's play ball here in Athens. First pitch is in there for a strike. Painted the outside corner there, did Olsen. We are underway. There's a foul off to the right side. Central Michigan has the first base dugout. Today, uh, the Bobcats maining their usual home third base dugout. Simpson, a 206 hitter on the season. So far, is that the ball? One and two the count. There's a batter up the middle, off the mound, it's in the glove of the shortstop, and a, no digs able to be made over there, first base by Alec Patino. So, the first base runner is on for the Chippewas, Simpson gets on there, it'll be interesting to see if they score that in error or a base hit, waiting to see when that updates. Now up for the Chippewas, and they're, they're going to call that an error on the first baseman, Patino. So Simpson reaches on an error. The Chippewas have their first baseman on, or their first base runner on. And now Jacob Donahue up to the plate for the Chippewas. He is batting 324 on the season. He is in second here. They go for the pickoff attempt. Do the Bobcats. Olsen keeping the base runner Simpson on his toes. Simpson was aware. Now he retakes a modest lead. 1-0 the count. That one's in there for a strike. Good pitch there from Olsen. Donahue 10 RBI so far on the season. A young season, of course. Profile the opponent a little bit in Central Michigan. They're nine and seven. It's their first MAC series. Uh, of course, the Bobcats had that series last week here at Bob Run, where they were able to get their MAC play underway. This is Central's first MAC series, so they are 0 and 0 in the MAC, but nine and seven overall. Their last series was last weekend. They were able to take out Sacramento State. They took three of four from that series. That's a high drive into left field. It's shallow, though. And in the end, the left fielder, Antle, is able to make the play. So a pop out for Donahue. Now batting for the Chippewas. Designated hitter number 21, Marquise Jackson. 
He's got he's batting 273 on the season. Got 11 RBIs. And there's a strike. Olsen active in the plate so far. And he's got his first out. The junior Jackson up to the plate. And that's just low. Count one and one now for Jackson. There's a drive. He got all that one, but he was just a little bit early on it. And that one is going to make its way onto Stimson Avenue right behind us. Look out if you're passing by. You'll sure know there's a baseball game. Of course, I'm not 100% sure if you'll be able to quite make it out, but we do have multiple we got multiple sports going on live here on the campus of Ohio University. Just over uh, on your the right side of your screen, you'll see Ohio softball field where we've got some mold action going on. You've got the Ohio softball team uh, taking on a little battle of the bricks against Miami. They're currently up 4-2. You can still catch that. And on a 1-2 count, Jackson takes one right on the right hand, and he sprints out over there. He'll take his base. So uh, a little rally here in the first inning for Central Michigan. Runners on first and second with one out. And just a, a quick talking to there for Mason Minzy. The catcher comes out, has a quick word with Olsen. So no hits yet for Central Michigan, but they've got a runner in scoring position. And now batting is Navarra, the cleanup hitter. That one's in there for a strike from Olsen. Good response. Both runners taking modest leads off their bases. Olsen checks the second base runner and pitches high. One and one now to count. It's a very active dugout, I must say, down there on the Central Michigan sideline. They are vocal. Pretty much every single member of that team is up on the fence watching with Ernest. And they have been vocal. And it is a chilly day. You could easily sit down there and bundle up, but they are active and in the game. And as, as I mentioned in the open, about 40 degrees. Uh, a touch of wind is the count now, two and two. Cloudy. Uh, we were expecting maybe a dash of rain, and knock on wood, we'll, we, we were dealing with a little bit of rain earlier in the day, but for now we stay relatively dry. That one's inside the ball. Gets away from Minzy. And now real danger knocking on the door here for the Bobcats in the first inning as the Chippewas now have runners on second and third with just one out as that pitch got away from the catcher. So the runners will advance. Count now full as well. Big pitch coming up here for Luke Olsen early in this game. Here's the payoff. Grounded, picked up by the first baseman. They'll make the play over at first. So the play, Patino makes the play after the error he made earlier. Olsen gets the out at first, but a run does come across for the Chippewas. It was Simpson with a heads-up base running to get in, and we have an early lead for Central Michigan. It is 1-0. Runners also on third. Jackson was able to advance as well. So heads-up base running all around from the Chippewas. Sacrifice and out. But they're able to plate the first run of the game in the top of the first inning. Now batting is Robbie Morgan the fourth, and his cigar to look out for. You don't want to give this guy any pitches over the plate, leading the home run crowd for the Chippewas. He's got four already on the young season and 15 RBIs as well. You can see it in that swing. He's looking for the fences. Just batting, just, just a 203 average, though. So it's a big swing and 
connection hitter. He's able to make a connection there. That's a base hit in the left field, and that'll score another run. An RBI single for Morgan the fourth. And it's a happy dugout over there on the right side for Central Michigan. 2-0 two, two Chippewas early. That is an RBI single for Robbie Morgan the fourth. And Jackson came across. So a couple of runs, a couple of mistakes in the field for the Bobcats. And quickly pounced upon by the Chippewas. And just like that, it is 2-0. And there's a strike resettling into things Olsen. The batter now is the catcher for the Chippewas, Nick Pardis. Or Dardis, excuse me. 250 batter on the year. 14 RBI, or excuse me, 3 RBIs for him and a home run. Pickoff attempt on Morgan the fourth. The left fielder over there for the Chippewas. It's chilly. You can see the third baseman, Casper Bauer, just wringing up his hands over there on the far side. And there's a strikeout for Olsen looking. Down goes Dardis, and the Bobcats get out of it, but not before the damage is done. Two runs in the first inning for Central Michigan. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll introduce the Ohio lineup as they look to bounce back 2 nothing Chippewas after the top of the first inning. Welcome back to Bob Run Stadium, and we are in the bottom of the first inning, and in case you missed it, some early damage from the Chippewas. Two quick runs in the top of the first. A couple of errors in the field for the Bobcats led to some runs for the Chippewas. It was Navarra with the RBI ground out, and then Robbie Morgan the fourth with an RBI single to bring the Chippewas into the early lead, and now they'll look to had it or keep it intact and the man charged with pitching that task is Adam Rakic. He's got 22.1 innings pitched on the season, a 4.43 ERA, two wins and one loss. AJ Roush will bat lead off for the Bobcats, the red shirt sophomore from Powell, 352 average so far. So, so far, so good in the field or on the plate for him. Contact hitter, it's what you look for in a leadoff batter. Guys that get on base, his on base percentage is a .444. That's not too shabby. You will certainly take that. And the Bobcats could use some early base runners here after falling into an early hole. There's quickly, or no, it's not a strike. It was looked like a strike to me. It's hard to tell from our, our vantage point, but it's 1-1 one, one the count. That one's outside. No qualms about that one, 2-1. and one. 
So the alignment for the Chippewas, they've obviously got Rakic pitching. Catching is Dardis, the man who closed out that bottom of, or top of the first. This one's fouled back and over our heads. Yeah, Preston at first base, Mitchell at second base, Simpson at short, Stewart is at third. Roush fouls another one, and this one will be out of play as well. Then the three pillars in the outfield are Morgan the fourth, who had the RBI in the first, Donahue and Navarra at center and right field, respectively. And that one is inside. Good take from Roush. Full count. Good battle early here. The payoff is inside. And just like I said, you're looking for base runners. You're looking for guys that get on base. And A.J. Roush works an early walk. And the Bobcats will take that and then some as that will bring Colin Kasperbauer up to the plate. One of the Bobcats perennially best players over the past couple seasons was on the Mac third team last year. Fifth year senior from Sioux City, Iowa. 238 average, so working through some kinks this year. He shows bunt on the first pitch. Pulled it back. Pitch was in there for a strike from Rakic. That one is inside for ball number one. It's an interesting start to the season for the Bobcats. They're four and ten. Two and one in the Mac, though. They've definitely found their footing over the past couple of weeks. There's a strike in there from Mrakic. Good pitch on the outside corner. One and two, the count to Casper Bauer. They were able to pick one up against Western Kentucky, a very good baseball team. They were able to, they, they dropped the first three games, were able to win a hard-fought game of four to avoid the sweep as Casper Bauer goes down swinging. Great pitch from Rakic. Had Casper Bauer all tied up. And that will bring up the catcher, Mason Minzy. 300 average from Michigan, a Michigan product. Now on just a bit outside, the right-handed hitter up to the plate now. Or excuse me, left-handed hitter. No, right-handed hitter. I'm being silly today. And now the pickoff attempt over on the far side. Minzy is a switch hitter, so maybe he's just trying to confuse me. He can bat from either side. Steal attempt, and that's ripped in a right field. That's going to drop for a base hit. This could be extra bases. The runner, Roush, is going to come around and come home, and he will not be challenged. And the Bobcats immediately respond in the bottom of the first. Looks like we're set for a high-scoring game, and now it looks like, well, no, just a stoppage of play so that uh, the Minzy can take his batting stuff off, and he is the one who does the damage early as Mason Minzy rips a double into right center. Pretty much right over at the 380 sign where that wall is back there. Put it right in between the center and right fielder, and Roush had a great jump. You might have seen it. Well, he was taken off to steal there. Instead, uh, the ball was ripped. Great piece of hitting there for Minzy, and the Bobcats respond right back, and we have a 2-1 to one ball game here in Athens. And that'll bring up Alec Patino, another Iowa product from Sioux City, Iowa, just like Colin Kasperbauer. He's batting 327 to start off this young season. He leads the Bobcats in RBIs with 20. One and two, the count here to Patino. He started all 14 games, or now this will be game number 15 for the Bobcats. He started all 15 of them. 
That one's fouled and out of play. So our count remains one and two. Patino, the juniors, having a great start to the season, as we mentioned. Just uh, 20 RBIs, not too shabby through 14 games of action. He's got a shot here to potentially add on to that number if he can if he can find a base hit here um, he's got a shot at potentially getting up to 15 if Minzy gets a good jump over at second base Bobcat's trying to quickly tie this game up and he won't get that opportunity right down the middle second strikeout from Rakic this one looking and Patino not able to capitalize. They're not out of it yet, though. That's just two outs. And now it'll be Will Sturek up to the plate, the right fielder, number 26. Batting right-handed, the senior. And that one's right in there for a strike, 0-1. Oh so far, Mrakic has done a good job of jumping out ahead of counts. That one is in between, and it should go right to short. And a routine play is made by the Chippewas. So the damage was not quite alleviated, though, as the Bobcats were able to bounce right back. It was Mason Minzy with a double into right center to score A.J. Roush, and the Bobcats immediately respond. They do leave a runner on second, though. So they still trail 2-1, to one, but they do respond. We'll be right back with the top of the second. Let's do it. Second inning of action here, and we have not really had the chance to breathe. It has been a quick start here in Athens. Both teams getting on the board in the first inning. Central Michigan currently pacing us 2-1. to one. And now batting for the Chippewas, Ellie Stewart, the right-hander from California. And he will be quickly put out by Casper Bauer at third base. And the ground out. And good fielding from the Bobcats after a couple slip-ups there in the first inning. Root made that play look simple. Casper Bauer with some smooth fielding over there at third. Not an easy ground out there. It was a little bit short. Had to come in and make the play. This one is leaning foul, and it will be foul just outside of the Central Michigan bullpen over there. This is Cade Preston, the graduate student from DeWitt, Michigan. And he is only played, this is actually his first start of the season for Cade Preston. He had appeared in eight previous games. One ball, one strike to count. That one was inside. Preston also listed as a pitcher. Not sure how much he has pitched this season. That one is ripped in the left field, but it will be a routine fly out in the end. 
Under it was Antle. So a quick two outs in this inning for the Chippewas. And now batting ninth will be number one, Christian Mitchell. He's a freshman from Romeoville, Illinois. That one was high and a bit outside. Ball number one. And no doubt about that one. Right in there for strike one for Olsen, who after really can't really blame him a ton for what happened in the first inning. A couple of things out of his control. But he was able to settle back in after he did give up some hard hit balls, but definitely was able to rebound towards the end of that inning, and it's been a good start to this inning so far. Two quick outs for the Bobcats. That one is in the center, high. It's a long run for Roush, and he's able to make the play on the run. That's not easy, but he made it look easy. A.J. Roush with a nice play in center field, and it's a quick 1-2-3 inning for the Bobcats. And we move into the bottom of the second. We are moving now with some pace. Central Michigan now back out into the field. We can stay right here as this will be a quick transition as that wasn't a long inning at all. Bobcats, as we mentioned, 4-10, and 10, 2 and one in the MAC. Central Michigan, 9-7, and seven, and this is their first MAC contest. This is game number one of a three-game set this weekend. And I'll, I'll be on the call for all three of them, but we'll have broadcast partners for the next couple days. We should have Sam Hyman with me on the call tomorrow. And then Sunday, for any of you who watch Copperhead Baseball this summer. A familiar face will be on the call. Cedric Granger will be with me for that one. It'll be a fun little throwback to the days of June and July of Copperhead Baseball. Feels a little bit uh feels a little bit like that right now. I'm up in the same box where I'd call or watch the Copperheads game. Cedric of course called all of them. I only called a handful. I was kind of the backup rotation guy with of course, it was Cedric and Tim Hanna were the typical two. I'd do the PAs on the home games. It was it was a good time. And if you're ever in Athens over the summer and you're finding yourselves with maybe a lack of something to do on a Friday or a Saturday night, a Copperheads game is a great way to spend it. You'll have fun, some cheap food and drinks, and a great atmosphere. They do a great job here in Athens, make it a great summer for the players, fans, and everybody involved. As we move into the bottom of the second inning, 2-1 Chippewas. Now batting for the Cats is left fielder Gideon Antle. He's from Licking, Missouri. Big swing on that one, and quickly behind 0-2 is Antle. And he grounds this one. It's a tough play, but it goes to the pitcher. He's going to make the tag. Ooh, and a little stumble from Antle over on the far side. A pitcher maybe could have tossed it to the bag, but instead he went for the tag. Antle maybe tried to use some quick feet to try and get around it. Couldn't quite do it, though. And a quick out for the Bobcats. Now batting is uh, the designated hitter today, number 15, Alex Finney from Oxford, Michigan. He's got a 167 average on the year. His 11th start. This could be a tough play. They're looking for it out, and it was right on the foul line. I think the official said it would have been foul if it dropped, but it did not. It was a good play over there in right field by Navarra. So similar to the Chippewas after both teams had a good offensive first inning, it's been quiet in the second inning. Two, two quick outs for the Bobcats as well. And now is Billy Adams up to the plate. And he hits one. Takes the first pitch right to short. And that'll be a 1-2-3 inning for the Cats. A very quick second inning. Both teams going 1-2-3. 
Mrakic with good work on the mound. We will take a break this time, and when we come back, it will be the top of the third from a chilly Athens, Ohio. Inning number three. We are moving along at a nice pace. No pitch clock needed here in college. I'm not sure if they are implementing it yet. I, I think that there may be some form of an implemented pitch clock. I'd have to read up a little bit more on the NCAA rules with that, as that is flied out into left center. It's back, and a tough play back there in the end for Antle, but he made it. Um kind of opposite from the way that Roush made the play at the end of the second look easy. He made that one maybe look a little bit more difficult than it was, but regardless, Antle makes the play. And that was Simpson who reached on that error and scored a run in the first who had that fly out just now. And that'll bring up Donahue who did fly out in the first inning. There's a strike in there from Olsen who is now Chugging along. And there's a grounder. It gets by the glove of Casper Bauer, and it was always going to be a tough play for the shortstop Dolan. Well, it got by the glove of Casper Bauer and into the glove of Dolan. He thought about it, but I mean, that would have been on Sports Center if he was able to make that play. In the end, I think he makes the smart choice to just keep it in and, you know, maybe save what could have been more bases for Donahue, and it will be a single for him, and that'll bring up Jackson, who was hit by a pitch in the first inning, also was able to score a run, Olsen deals, outside for ball number two, or excuse me, ball number one. Pickoff attempt once again, just keeping keep Donahue honest over there at first base. And that one is a little bit outside. Ball, that is ball number two with one out here. Runner on first is Jacob Donahue. It is 2-1 Central Michigan over Ohio. Is that a little check swing is fouled back. That will be strike one. Is that, a, is that, I dare say, a little bit of maybe a, a, a singular ray of sunshine daring to poke down upon Athens? Uh, amidst a large amount of cloud cover. We've seen it a lot over the past couple of days. Yesterday was a beautiful day in Athens, about 55 degrees, sunny. Felt like springtime, but once again, uh, as is typical of Ohio weather, uh, blasted back to reality the next day. And while today is by no means a chilling and freezing day, it is still on the colder side of things, especially compared to yesterday. Say right, low, low 40s. And the rain is held off again, knock on wood. 
the runner goes and no attempt as that was that was a walk anyway. So the runner would have been safe on second regardless. So no throw, no steal even technically because that was ball number four. So the walk worked by Jackson. He's now still 0 for 0 after the hit by pitch and the walk now. So now that brings up Navarra. And once again, after the quiet second, Central Michigan have worked their way into a positive position again here. Navarra made that nice play in the field last inning, catching that foul ball. As that one is ripped high and far, and that is gone. Zero doubt about that one off the bat of Garrett Navarra. And Central Michigan takes a 5-1 lead. Merciless baseball from the Chippewas there. Couple, uh, a, base, a base hit and a walk. And a first pitch Garrett Navarra sees, he laces in the right center. Half a look from Will Sturrock in right, and he didn't even bother. That is a mash of a home run. Love to see the count on that at some point. And it is party time in the Central Michigan dugout. They are dancing and singing, as they should be. 5-1 Chippewas. Now, Minzy will take a minute here, and he will discuss with Olsen. Maybe he just needs a quick second to settle down. Now, Robbie Morgan, the fourth up. He was the leading home run hitter, and still is with four, but that's Garrett Navarra's second home run of the season, and it'll be his seventh, eighth, and ninth RBIs. There's a big swing and a miss from Morgan. Singled and brought in a run in that rally in the first. Just a bit low there from Olsen. Minzy wanted it. No call from the umpire. There's no doubt about that one. Strike number two. And we are loaded up in the count here with one out. Central Michigan just padded into a 5-1 lead. Three-run blast from Garrett Navarro. But no dice. It'll be a walk for Morgan, the fourth. And that will bring up Dardis, who struck out looking to end the first inning. Right-handed hitter. Junior is 0 for 1. Five runs on just three hits for the Chippewas. Of course, the, the first inning, you had the, the, the error and the hit by pitch. Both of those runs came in, and then they just they have not given Ohio a chance to breathe we're moving quickly, but not even a chance so far for the Bobcats. Even though they've they've had their they had their rally in the first inning, they were able to get a run, but they left a runner on second. So far, the Chippewas have just been merciless with their opportunities. They've had two opportunities to plate runners, and they have taken advantage of them fully. And that wins you baseball games more times than it doesn't. And there's a swing and a miss from Dardis, and that'll make it a 0-2 count. That one is fouled back. Uh, Dardis stays alive. Dardis from Bay City, Michigan. Stayed home. Stayed close to home, the junior. Catching today. That one is high. Good take. Now make it a one and two count. Uh, 
That one is ripped in a left field. Another no doubt home run for the Chippewas. Nick Dardis pounces on a 1-2 pitch and sends that ball out of here. And just like that, the mercilessness continues from the Chippewas. 7-1 as Dardis now will join the party in the dugout. You can hear it <laughs> in the in that dugout. It is a party down there, and now that'll bring out a mound visit here for Olsen, who was looking so good for that second inning. And things now have broken down. And the Bobcats are in a deep hole here. course with it being marked there's another college sport that is being showcased right now March Madness for taking the time to watch some college baseball we, we thank you we appreciate you um, but I recommend that as soon as you're done tuning into this one that you get right back on your March Madness because it has been a thrilling tournament so far and one that of course Ohio has some history in. Central Michigan really doesn't have as illustrious a basketball history as they do in a couple other of their sports, but they have been to the tournament. Ohio, of course, won a tournament game just two years ago against a team that was, funnily enough, just upset in the tournament, Virginia. Virginia lost to Furman yesterday and what was a crazy finish. And funnily enough, Virginia and Ohio actually played themselves, played each other earlier this year in baseball. And this Virginia, the baseball team, was able to exact a little bit of revenge for their basketball team a couple of years ago. Virginia was able to win that game. Well, Ellie stored up to bat. He grounded out in the first inning, and now it's just about damage control for the Bobcats. You have to keep this game close. You can't let it get farther than it already has with the two big blasts in this inning already from Navarro and Dardis, and that will certainly help. A nice strike out there from Olsen. Gets Stewart to chase out of the zone. And now Cade Preston will come back up to the plate. He flew out. Strike number one there. Two outs now. Bobcats trying to get out of this inning with the damage they've already received and not any more. That one was low and outside. And Preston swings and misses that one. One and two the count. That one is lifted. It's high into center field. Going back is Roush and stumbling. He's able to make the play. So Roush is able to get the Bobcats out of the jam. Olsen is able to get out of the inning, but not before massive damage is done by the Chippewas. Two big shots. Navarra into right center and Dardis into left. And that put five runs on the board in the top of the third for the Central Michigan Chippewas. Seven to one. The Bobcats have a lot of work to do. Can they get back into this one? We'll be right back as the Bobcats go to work on offense.
Welcome back to Athens, and something that I, I knew that it exists, I wanted to clarify. Um, the pitch clock obviously has been a, a subject that many have debated and talked about in the baseball world over the past couple of seasons, and now as it's being implemented in Major League Baseball spring training, it has been implemented into the NCAA. There's a 20-second action clock limit and a 120-second limit between innings. So you might be noticing that we come back from these breaks fairly quickly as back into the plate for the Bobcats is Nick Dolan, the nine hitter, shortstop. So when the ball is dead, the pitcher must engage the pitcher's play with possession of the ball before the ball can be put into play. And that means that the pitcher must engage with possession of the ball and then the catcher must be in the box and the batter must be in the box within 20 seconds. So you might notice if you, you're kind of thinking in your head here, as that pitch was thrown, we're at about 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 seconds. So there's a noticeable, you can clearly tell that these pitchers have, have adjusted now as we're in game 15. These pitchers understand and the, the batters and players understand the rules of the pitch clock and how it works. Obviously, it's still a subject of hot topics. That one's ripped up the middle. It will, the play will be at short, and making a good play at short is Simpson. Getting it over to the first baseman, Preston. And Bobcats lose their first out of the inning, and that will bring them back up to the top of the order. And Roush. Well, the pitch clock has been, a su uh, of course, a, a, a subject of intense debate and I, I think it's interesting that the, the the between innings limit is also interesting because obviously there are changes that made once when we get later into this game when there are pitching changes and that will obviously make an impact but it is something that it, it, you know it's it's different for college kids to have to implement to it of course they've been playing baseball a different way their whole lives is a couple in the crowd didn't love that call it did seem a little outside but the Official calls it a strike. That one was definitely low. So that'll be two balls and a strike to Roush, who walked in the first inning. We talked about how it's important for leadoff hitters to get on. The Bobcats need base runners now even more than when Roush came up in the first. As they're down six runs, seven to one, as that one is fouled off and might have even found its way into OSF. And Roush, the right-hander from Owen Tangi Liberty, Columbus High School. Columbus Area High School, I should say. There's a big swing and a miss, and that'll be a strikeout for A.J. Roush. Now, Casper Bauer's coming up to the plate. He did strike out in his first at-bat. It's been a very solid adding from Adam Rackage so far, the pitcher for the Chippewas. Just a one-earned run. Just the one hit. Of course, gave up the uh, gave up the walk to Roush. Cast Roush struck out, and then the batter on deck, Mason Minzy, ripped a double into right field, and that gave the Bobcats their first and only run of the game so far. One and one to count, Casper Bauer. That one is right back at Mrakic, and he's able to just dead it with his glove, make a smart play, and toss it over. And another 1-2-3 inning for the Bobcats. As Casper Bauer grounds out, Dolan grounds out, and Roush struck out. Not what the Bobcats needed there, and now Central Michigan will have a chance to pad their lead. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back with the fourth inning from Bob Wren Stadium.
321. Back in Athens for the fourth inning of this one. 7-1 Central Michigan here in the top of the fourth inning. They did a lot of the damage in the top of the third with a couple of home runs from Navarra and Dardis. That brought in five runs. And they'll look to pad their lead. Might notice seven runs on just four hits so far for the Chippewas. So a little bit unorthodox, but they are doing the business right now. As Mitchell's up to bat now. As Central Michigan's almost lapped Ohio in terms of the order. This is Mitchell's second at bat. And we'll get back to the top as Simpson will be, it'll be his third at bat. And by the time this inning is over, they may be a full circuit around the order ahead of Ohio as that one catches the inside corner. And that'll be a strikeout for Mitchell. Olsen, after struggling there a little bit in the middle of that inning, was able now through two, th two of his last three outs have been strikeouts. Now, as we mentioned, Simpson up to the plate. That one is high in the air. It could be a tough one to see with the clouds. Roush sees it well, though, and is able to make the play. So a quick fly out, a quick couple outs for the Bobcats, just as much as the Chippewas, and a quick two outs. And that will bring up Central Michigan's Jacob Donahue, who singled and was on base, came home for a run on Navarra. Navarra's got four RBIs on the day. That was a strike inside. And that one is low and away. Uh, one and one the count. Wind is blowing at at the backs of these hitters today. That one's in there for a strike. One and two. Wilson looking to get out of this inning quickly after the damage from the last inning. As that one is ripped in, and that is a base hit into right field for Donahue. Might have been an old commentator's curse there, so I'm, I apologize, Luke Olson. But no matter for Donahue, as he's able to take care of business, ripped a single through, and... Now it'll bring up Marquise Jackson, who is technically 0 for 0 after the hit by a pitch, and he walked in his last at-bat. Also scored a run on that Navarra home run in the last inning. So now we get back to that point where I was saying now that Minzy, who's due up for the Bobcats at the top of the first inning, uh, there's a strike, 0 and 2 the count. Minzy's due up in the top of, or the, excuse me, the bottom of the fourth inning. And Marquise Jackson's already hitting for the third time. Minzy's will only be hitting for the second time. So Central Michigan will have gone all the way around their lineup a full time as the steal attempt here is in time. No, he dropped the ball. It was a great throw from Minzy. was right on the money, but I'm not sure. I think it was... I couldn't tell who made the tag there. It was either Adams or Nolan. I think it might have been Adams who was going for the tag. The ball just slipped out. It was a tough play to make. We'll give him that. Well, now running in, runner in scoring position. That's another good play from Minzy as well. That was a tough pitch to grab, and if he doesn't grab it, that might put a runner on third. But a good pick from Minzy. 2-2 two, two the count now to Jackson. Designated hitter today. That one is fouled back and into the netting right in front of us. Count remains two and two. That was pitch number 75 for Luke Olson through three and two thirds.
That is low, and we will load the count here. 3-2, two, two outs with a runner on second base for Marquise Jackson. Then for Michigan trying to once again pad this lead as they did in the third. That one is high in the air, in the infield, but foul, and it drops foul. The wind looks like it tricked Casper Bauer there a little bit, so he wasn't able to make the play, but it does drop foul. So the damage for now is limited for the Bobcats, but that does give Jackson another opportunity at the plate. So the count remains three and two. Here comes the payoff for Olsen. And it is outside. Jackson works a nice walk. And that will put runners on first and second for the man who just homered on the last inning. Garrett Navarro just hit a three-run shot, as a matter of fact, in the last inning. It's almost the exact same. It's, it's actually the exact same setup, just the outs are different. Donahue singled. Jackson walked. Navarro three-run home run. The Bobcats will be hoping that that doesn't happen again. Also with a good pitch on the inside corner. That'll stop that from happening right off the bat. And Navarro, of course, had that monster shot. That was at least 390 feet into right center. Probably farther. That one is low. One and one the count to Navarro. He had a lead Central Michigan in average. 347 average, and that'll probably go up today after the after his home run, and who knows what else he's got. A couple more at-bats coming up. That one is a dribbler into the first baseman who lays it off to Olsen, and he's able to make the play. So the Bobcats get out of the jam this time and are able to limit Central Michigan to a goose egg on the scoreboard. They gave up some damage. A, a hit was given up by Olsen, and a walk, so the man, Garrett Navarro, was able to come up and make a play once again, but this time Olsen was able to win the duel, and that will lead the Bobcats once again. they got to chew into this deficit. Still down 7-1 to one as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Welcome back to Bob Wren Stadium. We are still chugging along here in this baseball matchup between Ohio and Central Michigan. It is 7-1 Chippewas as Minzy's up to the plate. He's the guy who's done the damage for the Bobcats. He's their only man on the board with a hit right now, and he's the reason they've got a one on the scoreboard. So he was able to bring home A.J. Roush on a RBI double in the first inning. But since then, the Bobcat bats have been quiet. It's been eight straight outs for Rakic, who has done a job on the, on the mound. Two and one the count to Minzy. That one is fouled off over the heads of 
couple of the fans who were down there by the Central Michigan dugout and in the, on the little hill over there on the far side. Foul back once again. We remain two and two. With it being March and all, thought we'd look back and take a look at some of the other schools that have, or some of the results of some of these schools in March Madness, of course. As the 2-2 two -two is swung on and missed by Minzy. So, nine up and nine down here from Rakic. It has been dominance. That includes four strikeouts. He's been real good. Now Patino up to the plate. He did strike out looking in his first at bat. And this swings on the first pitch into the second baseman. And it is a little high. And he says that he got the foot down. It was lucky. A little bit lucky for the second baseman. Um, Christian Mitchell that Preston has the right to him. Because that was a high throw. Ground down for Patino. So once again, the Bobcats go up, down two outs very quickly. And now Sturek takes a strike. Going back to what I was saying about the tournament, Central Michigan's appeared in the tournament four times. And they have won three games in those four tournament appearances. Ohio. Has appeared a few more times. We'll take a look at Ohio's when they're in the field. Sturek rounded out in the f in the second inning, and he'll strike out in the fourth. So the Bobcats once again fail to dent the deficit in the bottom of the fourth inning. And Central Michigan continue to chug along after the damage has mostly been done already. 7-1, to one, they continue to lead here against the Ohio Bobcats. And we'll, we'll stay here for this one as we're going to take a look at Ohio's NCAA tournament history, being March and all. Of course, many of us will keep a lot of their recent runs in the memory as of course they, they were able to do they were able to do the job in twenty ninth in twenty twenty one, excuse me. They were able to beat Virginia, but they of course came up short against Creighton. But they have they've had much they've had runs many runs recently, of course. Uh, many will remember back in twenty twelve uh, they were able to make the Sweet 16. Uh, DJ Cooper, one of the better players in Ohio men's basketball history, one of the better players in MAC basketball history, was a 2013 AP honorable mention. Helped lead them to two MAC tournament titles. They went, they made the tournament back-to-back -back years. They won tournament games in back-to-back -back years. Of course, Gary Trent was drafted to the NBA. Very proud basketball tradition here in Athens. But we're in March, and the Ohio basketball team is done. Of course, not all basketball teams are done, but both of these basketball teams are done, and both of these schools are focused on baseball. And Olsen deals, and that one is ripped over the head of Casper Bauer. That's a base hit for Morgan. He's got his second hit of the day. As that one gets by, and he'll be able to run to second, so a fielding error there. Seemed like it was on Adams who made the fielding error. So Morgan, it'll, it'll probably go down as a single and an error in the book. It should go down as a single and an error in the book. And is he limping slightly or just taking his stuff off? A little hard to tell, but it does seem like he is winded just a little bit. After that, he might have maybe grabbed his foot on, maybe snagged his foot on the base or something like that. Hope he's okay. Of 
Uh, he's seems all right. There's a little bit of a limp on him. It's so going back to the NCAA tournament. Ohio's five and thirteen in the tournament. They have won. The, they have won tournament games in 1960, 1964. 1983, 2010, 2012, and 2021. So they made it in 2010 and then 2012. They beat Georgetown in 2010, 97 to 83, as Olsen deals for a strike. They beat Michigan in 2012, what was a famous win. And then they beat South Florida, went to the Sweet 16, and then came up just short against North Carolina in the Sweet 16 in 2012. And of course, beat Virginia and Creighton, or beat Virginia before losing to Creighton in 2021. They beat Notre Dame in 1960, beat Louisville in 1964, and beat Illinois State in 1983. One and one the count here to Dardis. His last at bat was a home run. He mashed one in the left right over that Mac championship sign over where the uh, those MAC titles are listed for the Bobcats. Darnus mashed one right over that to pad the lead, and that was where it is at right now. Made it 7-1. That was a two-run shot that plated Morgan the fourth. He had singled. So he he'd singled this one, but he also was able to advance to second on the error it seemed like it was Adams, but I think they called it on the left fielder, Antle, but it seemed like Adams dropped the ball. And this time he won't be homering as he will be walking back to the dugout. There's a strikeout for Olsen, who's bounced back nicely after giving up a couple of home runs in that third inning. A couple of strikeouts to go with that. And that will bring up Ellie Stewart, third baseman. He grounded out in the second and then struck out in the third. hear how active that Central Michigan dugout is as there's strike number two to Dardis. It is a they have been chirping and yelling and dancing and singing all day. I'm a fan of it. They have they're having a good time down there that's for sure. And pretty much everybody is up off the off the bench as there's a strikeout. Olsen picks up his second straight strikeout. That's Ellie Stewart's second straight strikeout as well. And that'll bring up Cade Preston, who's also 0 for 2, two flyouts. As we are in the top of the fifth inning. So far, so good for the Chippewas. They're up 7 to 1. That one is low away, ball two. Of course, this is Central Michigan's first tilt in the MAC. They'll, they'll have their first MAC home games coming up next weekend. They'll take on the Kent State Golden Flashes in a three-game set. That's another fly ball, it seems like, for, and it's just caught. A tough play in the end over there in right field for Sturek, but... The Ohio outfielders have been on it today. They've made a few good plays, and Preston flies out for the third time. When we come back, the Ohio Bobcats need to get going on offense. 
Rakic has retired the last 10 batters he has faced. Can Gideon Antle get things going for the Cats? We'll find out as we take a break into the bottom of the fifth. Bobcats need to get things going on offense. Gideon Antle will look to be the man to get things going. He was tagged out in the second inning. And he swings on the first pitch. It's a high fly in the infield. A lot of guys going for it. And in the end, it's Mitchell, the second baseman, who comes over and makes the play. Lost his hat in the process. It seemed like there might be some confusion there. There were about four or five guys that could have made the play. In the end, they won't care where the chip was, as the play was made in the infield. And another quick out for the Bobcats. Finney now batting. Finney flew out in his first at bat. Quickly ahead in the count 2-0. Bobcats needed to just, just get a base runner. They haven't had a base runner since the first inning. And Rakic has shut down that offense. There's a strike. 3-1 the count now. And there's another one. Just caught the bottom edge of the zone. 3-2 the count. So far, Adam Rakic has been near untouchable. And that one is fouled back. Umpiring crew today from Athens. Our home plate umpire is Matt Nieder. First base ump is Jay Myers. And our third base ump is John Milkey. That one is popped in the infield. It could be, it, it looks like it is playable on the right side. And the play is made by the first baseman, Preston. In foul territory. Another fly out for the Bobcats. It has been a struggle at the plate today for Ohio. One for 15 in general with one walk. Now the freshman Adams up to the plate. And there's the strike. It's been a sparkler so far from Rackage. Just 60 pitches. One hit. One earned run, one walk. All that happened in the first inning. Five strikeouts through four and two-thirds. It's been real good stuff from Rakic. As there is a ground ball into short. Throw is made in time. 
And once again, the Bobcats go 1-2-3. The offense has sputtered out for Ohio. They're going to need to get things going and fast if they're going to try and get their way back into this game. And we are through five here in Athens. And we will see if a, maybe a potential pitching change is coming here for the Bobcats. It looks like it is. Trying to make it. He's got a six ERA on the year. Made three appearances, thrown just three innings, so clearly just a one inning kind of guy here for the Bobcats from Coach Craig Moore. Looking to try and get a quality inning here from Cells. And that'll, that'll, of course, give a little bit more time for him to warm up a little bit. We'll, we'll stay here through this extended break. So we've made a pitching change here in Athens. It's Colin Sells in, number 27, and he'll face Christian Mitchell to start things off, who's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a flyout. A strike to get things going. That one is outside. One and one. Final line for Luke Olson. It's going to be 5.0 innings pitch, six hits, seven runs, six of them earned, three walks, five Ks, and 100 total pitches. So after giving up a couple of rough innings there, especially that third inning where he gave up a couple of runs, he settled things down in the fourth and fifth and kept the Bobcats within close enough range where they could then get the offense going. Could maybe find their way back into this game. Two and two the count here. And there's a swing and a miss in the three two. Good payoff pitch there from Sells. As he gets a strikeout to start off his outing. Now batting. For the Chippewas is Justin Simpson, shortstop. He is 0 for 2, reached on an error in the first inning, and has had two flyouts since then. As that one is ripped into the left center, that is a base hit, and he's going to dig for two, Simpson, and he's going to get in there. Standing double from what looked like a single. Elite speed there from Justin Simpson. As it seemed like he was always heading for second there, even if the throw was coming. The throw never came from the outfield. And he dug in and got to second quickly. It was always on his mind, and he takes a nice lead off second, being aggressive here. As Central Michigan looks to continue to put the pedal to the metal. Donahue now batting. He's singled in his last two plate appearances. Minzy's able to corral that pitch, and count will remain 1 and 0. Oh. Checks the runner, throws, 
and it's in there for a strike. One and one. Of course, this is not nearly the last baseball action we will see here at BWS this weekend. We've got two more games coming for you. If you didn't, if you're just tuning in, as the steal attempt is there, and once again the speed of Simpson just flashing there. As he hustles for a stolen base, second to third, not easy, especially when you consider how sh how much shorter it is from second to th or home to third than s home to second. He made that look easy. No throw even came from Minzy. He even thought about stealing home right there. Minzy was able to pick the ball up as well. That's his second stolen base of the year, Simpson. And there's a strikeout for Donahue. So two strikeouts and a double given up by Sells. And he'll look to get his way out of the inning here with Jackson, who is still technically not made a plate appearance. He has a hit by pitch in the first inning and two walks. So zero for zero is how it will show up on the box score right now. That one is low and away. Want to know the count? As Central Michigan, seven runs on seven hits. They had seven runs on four hits. And they've had three base hits since then, but none of those have plated runs. Ohio, just one run on one hit. It was that RBI double all the way back in the first inning for Mason Minzy, the catcher. And since then, they have not been able to make a dent. As there's a strike in there from Sells. Two and one, the count to Jackson. Simpson on third, looking to use that speed to find a way home. That one's outside. Three and one now, the count to Marquise Jackson. 273 hitter on the year. That one's in there for a strike, and we load the count here in the top of the sixth inning. Still 7-1 Central Michigan. We've been that way since the top of the third. And that one is grounded. Good play at first base, and it makes its way into cells, and that play will save a run. Over at first base, nice bit of play from Patino over there. And then Sells makes the cover. Sells gets through the inning unscathed. And the Bobcats just about remain within reach. Still down six runs. They need their offense to wake up and wake up fast. They'll bring up uh, Dolan, Roush, and Casper Bauer when we come back. Back in Athens, and it has been a sparkling outing from Adam Rakic. Five innings so far. He's still out there on the mound. Just one hit, one run, a one earned run. It was that RBI double. He gave up a walk to start the game to A.J. Roush. Mason Minzy hit an RBI double. And since then, it has been silence from the Ohio Bats. Five strikeouts for Rakic. 
And Nick Dolan will look to change that here. And the Bobcats need to change that if they want to get back into this game. 7-1 the score. Currently Central Michigan leads it. Dolan swings and misses and he's quickly behind 0-2. I mentioned it earlier. Rakic has done such a good job today of jumping ahead of counts. The amount of 0-2s we've seen today is the 0-2 pitch there is low 1-2. It gives pitchers the creative freedom to work outside the zone. And it allows, ba it, it terrifies batters because now they're constrained. They can't make that mistake or they are heading back to the dugout. As their strike looking as Dolan goes down again. Strikeout number six for Adam Rakic. And A.J. Roush now comes to the plate and he'll be the next Bobcat to try and switch things up. He has 0 for 1, had that walk that I just mentioned in the first, and struck out in his last at-bat. That one is high. Ball 1. The Bobcats have not had a hit since that Minzy RBI double in the first. Rakic has held them hostage. Roush had a good look at that one. Had a big swing at it too, but couldn't connect. 1 and 1. There's a player that could find a way to get that hit. It might be A.J. Roush. He's got 19 hits on the year, which leads the team. That one's outside. Three and one the count. Bobcat's trying desperately to find a way back into this game. Can A.J. Roush be the first one? Yeah, he can. There's the base hit that the Bobcats have been searching for since the first inning. A.J. Roush gets on base. He rips a single into left field, and the Bobcats have a base runner for the first time since the bottom of the first, and that'll bring up Colin Kasperbauer. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out to try and Let's make things a little bit more interesting here at Bob Brand Stadium. Things are finished over at OSF. The Ohio. Ooh, and that'll hit Casper Bauer. And for the first time today, the Bobcats have multiple runners on base. And for the first time all day, Adam Rakic looks just a little bit shaky. And that'll bring up the man who was able to get the only run off of him, Mason Minzy. And for the first time all day, Central Michigan just a little bit uncomfortable maybe. As Adam, A.J. Roush on second base, Colin Kasperbauer on first. Both take reasonable leads. That one is popped high into right center. Runners will tag. Catch is made. Roush will tag up and he will head to third. So we will have runners on the corners. Minzy flies out, but he does advance the runner. Two outs now for Alec Patino. The power hitter and the RBI hitter for this team. Again, still leading the team in RBIs with 20. Minzy's up to 15 now with his earlier in the game. Patino, the lefty, will try to make things happen here. For the Bobcats, they've got the first most threat that they've had since the first. Roush on third, Casper Bauer on first. That one was in for a strike, 0 oh and 1, with two outs here. Alec Patino looking to make things happen. Patino rips one by, and that'll do it. RBI single for Patino. Casper Bauer will take off, and he will head to third. And the Bobcats put something on the board. In the bottom of the sixth, A.J. Roush with some heads up base running, and Alec Patino with a nice piece of hitting down the right field line. The lefty with a classic left-handed base hit, and the Bobcats are on the board. 7-2 to two. after being held scoreless for four straight innings. They finally put a dent in what's been a great outing from Adam Rakic. The damage may not yet be done. As that one is ripped high, 
Is it far enough is the question. It is. We have a ball game here at Bob Wren Stadium. Will Sturek takes a three-run blast into right center field. And just like that, the Bobcat offense is alive. Seven to five here at, at Athens. And we have a ball game, folks. Two runs is the lead now, just like that. It seems like it was in a blink of an eye. Wow. How quickly things can change in the game of baseball. Will Sturex takes the first pitch he sees, 385 feet. It wasn't by much. It definitely wasn't by much. Garrett Navarro had a long, hard look up there to see if he had a play in the end. He did not. And the Bobcat offense, after being asleep, they were held hitless for four straight innings. They had nothing going. And just like that, a couple of singles, a hit by pitch. And before you know it, the Bobcats are within striking distance. Ohio is right there. Just a two-run game now. Just like that. How quickly things can change in baseball. Now this one is high from Antle. It might be a tough play. A couple of miscommunication. Or, or maybe not a miscommunication, but good communication between third baseman and left fielder. And it is Morgan the fourth that makes the play, but not before significant damage is done by the Bobcats. The three-run blast from Will Sturek and the RBI single from Alec Patino. And just like that, when it felt like the Bobcats were cruising for a bruising, they are right back in this one. It is seven to five. We'll take a quick break. And Central Michigan now looking to respond, trying to re-up their lead. Back at Athens for the seventh inning. And when it felt like this one might be dwindling towards a anticlimactic conclusion. Instead, we might be heading to something more interesting as Navarro laces one into right center and it's over the head of Roush. It was left center, excuse me, and he's digging for three and he will get there. A leadoff triple from Garrett Navarro. And Navarro's having himself a day, a three-run home run back in that third inning where Central did most of their damage. And he gets things going here in the top of the seventh with a triple. And Central Michigan trying to instantly put things back to the way they were after Ohio finally made a dent in what had been a great outing from Adam Rakic. Sells looking to settle back in now after giving up that triple. And as I was saying, we looked like we were heading towards an anticlimactic conclusion. Rather, now it seems like we're heading for quite the dramatic one here in Athens. That one swung out. Nice catch by the ump right there to snag that ball. 0-2 now the count. And Sells could use a strikeout here with the runner on third base with no outs. And he gets it. Beautiful pitch there from Sells. Got him with the breaking ball. And that'll bring up Robbie. Or no, that was, excuse me, that was Robbie Morgan, the fourth, who just struck out. Morgan was two for two as well with a walk. And now Dardis will come up. He 
had a two-run home run already himself. Dardis stepping into the plate. Two-run home run came in that f that big five-run third. This one gets away, and that'll be a run for Central Michigan. Garrett Navarra comes into a jubilant clubhouse. And 8-5 now, the Central Michigan stretches their lead once again. Sells with the wild pitch there, got away from Minzy. Strike there to Dardis now, who has the bases empty. And there's a strike. One and two, the count. And there's strike three, but the ball is dropped. Minzy will pick it up and toss it over to first. So the strikeout and the putout for the Bobcats. So two strikeouts in this inning for Sells. But, of course, the triple and then the wild pitch to bring in Navarra. Now Eli Stewart, who's 0 for 3, will come to the plate. He's got a couple of strikeouts, along with a ground out. That one is low. Ball one. Of course, we're just a couple weeks away from the big leagues getting underway. Crazy how time flies. Feels like we were just welcoming in football season just a couple of months ago, and it's now baseball season, just like that. Things move quickly. There's another strike. One and two. Trying to strike out the side. Or strike out the last few batters he's faced. That one is fouled off by Stewart. And there it is, another beautiful pitch. Sells had a couple of beautiful pitches, but he walks off with a little bit of frustration there after giving up the triple and then the wild pitch to give up the run. So Central Michigan extends their lead just a little bit, but the Bobcats still within striking distance. 8-5 to five here as we head to the seventh inning stretch. It's a quicker seventh inning stretch than maybe now with the pitch clock. They got to be a little bit quicker. But we continue to move at a swift pace here as Bunt shown from Finney, who is 0 for 2, pulls it back, and it was a ball. So 1 0 the count. Trying to get on base here. Alex Finney with a .279 on base percentage. That one is inside. Oh, no, not inside. 
looked inside from up here. A couple of grumbles from the crowd as the strike's called. One and two the count. And he strikes him out on that one. No doubt about that. As Kinney goes around. Quick strike out there to reestablish himself from Rakic after stumbling a little bit in that last inning. He had pitched five almost perfect innings and then a couple of mistakes, a single, a hit by pitch, and then just a hanging breaking ball that was pounced on by Will Sturek. He mashed it about 385 feet about where that uh, American flag is waving just under the words Ohio on your screen. And now there's a base hit. For Adams, the freshman, making something happen. The Medina native, a couple of Ohio kids still hung around in state. Billy Adams, one of them, and he's able to continue what's been a very, very good freshman season. 373 average for the freshman. And the Bobcats have a base runner for the second straight inning. And uh, there's a strike into Nick Dolan, the Pittsburgh native, the red shirt sophomore. One thing about this team is that it is young. You got a, you got a good a good mix of youth and experience. As that one has popped into the quarter of uncertainty, three guys around it, and eventually it was the center fielder Donahue who made the play. It was Donahue closing in on it along with Navarra and Mitchell, the second baseman. Mitchell and the right fielder Navarra. So two outs, runner on here for Roush who got that rally in the last inning started with that single. And there's a here right down the pipe from Rakic. Oh, and won the count. That one is fouled down the line and out of play. 0 oh and 2 now. Roush quickly behind once again. Rakic doing a good job of staying ahead of hitters. Here comes the payoff pitch. And it's just a bit outside or inside, excuse me. 1 and 2 now. The count. Interesting little scoreboard. Nick right here. Central Michigan, eight runs on eight hits. Ohio, five runs on five hits. Of course, that doesn't tell the full story. Ohio has two errors with that as well. Central Michigan with none so far. But that's what the box score will tell you. Of course, we're watching the game live. There's still plenty more action. We've still got two more innings of ball coming to you. As Roush just about stays alive, tips that one. Two and two the remains the count for A.J. Rout, the redshirt sophomore, who's also having a very good season, helping to be one of the leaders of the team. And he hits this one high and in the air in the similar spot to where uh, Dolan just flew out uh, a little bit farther back. But once again, the same outcome. Donahue makes the catch. Right by the Ohio sign in the outfield. And the Chippewas get out of that inning unscathed. So we go to the eighth. Ohio down three. Eight to five the score. Central Michigan leads. And they'll have an opportunity to pad their lead here in the top of the eighth inning.
Back in Athens, Colin Sells has definitively proved, proved me wrong when I said earlier in this game that he was just going to be a one-inning setup guy. Here he is in his third inning of work. He's gotten through two. Will he make it through this one? He's done pretty well so far, just a one-earned run. And four strikeouts. And that one is... Well, you can once again hear the displeasure in the crowd. Maybe a... That is a strike. That one's low. Two and one. Colin sells. It's been good stuff from him so far. Looking to continue into his third inning. That one is high. He's got five strikeouts. And that'll be a five pitch walk for Preston. Now batting is Mitchell. He's 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. He's got a base runner now in Preston. He takes a modest lead. Shows bunt and lays a nice one. Squeeze down the middle. No tag applied. And he beats it out. Nice speed shown from Mitchell. And just like that, very quickly, two base runners on, and I think that's going to end the day for Sells. Out comes Craig Moore. It appears. Moore asking, or no, it looks like he's asking the question of the umpire. A gentleman's debate now being had on the third baseline. You can see Moore... Got his hands up, kind of asking, well, what was that? It was a quick discussion. He returns to the dugout. Sells will, excuse me, Sells will stick it out. It was a beautiful bunt laid down by Mitchell, I must say. And he took advantage of it with the speed. Now you got runners on first and second very quickly. Central Michigan trying to finish this one off. They were leading for long stretches. They laid down another bunt, and it's another beauty or just about not. It just rolled. Mitchells was able to stay fair, or at least it was fair by the time it was touched by Sells. That one, smartly Sells, I think, saw it was rolling and let it roll, and it would roll foul. So strike one is all that will amount to. It was Simpson who we saw had some elite speed in his last at-bat, turned what looked like it was a routine single into a double, and then stole third base. He shows bunt again, pulls back, and it's a ball. Minzy checks the runners, and then tosses back two cells. The pitch. Once again, the bunt is pulled back. Minzy pitches, but it goes over the head. Of Dolan, the shortstop, who came over to cover, and that will allow the runners to advance. So, an unforced error there from the Bobcats in the field. And that will allow Central Michigan to have runners on second and third with nobody out. And now Sells in real trouble. Third error of the day for the Bobcats. There's strike number two into Simpson. Two and two the count now. Simpson is one for three. And he swings and misses. Strikeout number six for Sells. He's done good work here in relief. And now Donahue comes in. 
he is two for four with two singles. Struck out in his last at bat. Just slight foul tip there from Donahue. Sells now being visited by the umpire. We'll give him a new ball. Ethan Sargent here joining you for some Mac baseball. It is eight to five Central Michigan if you're just joining us. It's been a fun one. We've had some some action, some good defense, some good offense, and that one sells motioning that he lost the grip on that ball. And Donahue will sprint down over to first, his third on base appearance. And now the bases are loaded with one out for Marquise Jackson, who is 1-0 oh for 1. Uh, who, but he has been on base three times, and now I believe... Sells is done. Yep, the motion to the bullpen. And that will do it for Sells. A very solid outing, I must say. But he has left a handful here. A two and a third, officially, for Colin Sells. Three hits, one earned run as of now. Six strikeouts. Very solid stuff. But now, coming out of the pen, it seems like... I'm just going to handle on the number from up here. But it was a solid outing from from Colin Sells. He's applauded to the dugout. And we'll get some high fives from his teammates. Let me take a quick look around. It'll be, I believe... Dylan Masters, I believe. It appears to be number 13, Dylan Masters. That's what we'll roll with for right now. It's always a little hard to tell when they've... Well, we're kind of right back here behind the plate, and as you can probably see, you can't. there's no number on the front of the jersey. we got to look at the back of the jersey. It is Dylan Masters, number 13. He comes in with a 5.40 ERA, a 1-0 win-loss record, and four appearances so far. He's pitched just five innings so far this season, giving up six hits, three earned runs. Also has three walks and three strikeouts. And he is the one tasked with getting Ohio out of this big-time jam. Trying to keep Ohio in this game. They're down three. But with just with just two more opportunities to bat. And with Central Michigan knocking on the door, trying to blow this one open. They already blew it open once. It was a five-run third. A couple of home runs. One from Garrett Navarro. One from Nick Dardis. Gave them a 7-1 lead that stayed like that until the bottom of the sixth where the Bobcats' bats all of a sudden came to life. As the uh, first pitch for Masters is low, it was Alec Patino with an RBI single to bring in A.J. Roush. And then, before I blinked almost, before most of the people in this park blinked, Will Sturek with a three-run blast that brought Ohio within two. Central Michigan did get another run in the top of the seventh. Garrett Navarro got a triple, and then a wild pitch from Sells brought that run in. That's outside. Two and one the count for Masters on to Jackson. There is a strike right in there for Masters. Trying to get his first strike out, his first out. Two and two the count. Bases loaded. A strikeout could be massive here and change the complexion of this inning. And that's outside, 3-2. and two. Let's ratchet up the pressure a little bit more. Why not? 3-2 and two the count now. Masters versus Jackson. The payoff. 
is swung on and it is no it bounced bounced in front of the play would have been a really fun play potentially because Preston was already halfway home by the time either pitcher or catcher reacted I think he might have actually gotten there in time but we'll do it all again it was a foul tip 3-2 here's the payoff right down the pipe big time strikeout Jackson indicating he thought it was high no matter from the umpire he dismisses him and that's a big time strikeout for Dylan Masters in his first batter and now with two outs things become a little bit less difficult for Ohio but still very much a job to do as Garrett Navarro who's already got a home run and a triple is still is now at the plate of course as you just mentioned he's those got those two f two hits those are his only two two for four on the day a couple of ground outs to go along with that he's also scored two runs of course the home run he'll score a run and then he after he tripled there was a wild pitch by Sells was able to come home trying to keep Ohio in this game Dylan Masters came in for Colin Sells who pitched well but left the bases loaded and there's a nice changeup that finds its way into the zone. One and one the count. Masters to Navarre. And there's a big swing and a miss from Navarre. Masters has the fans cheering for him here. Big pitch coming. One and two the count with two outs here in the top of the eighth. 8-5 Eight CMU. And this one is dinked. Is it going to get over the head of the shortstop? No, it is not. The Bobcats get out of the bases. Loaded jam unscathed. Nice pitching from Dylan Masters to be able to get out of the jam. And the Bobcats remain in this baseball game. It is 8-5 here in the bottom of the eighth. Bobcats have two more frames to potentially get back into this one. We'll be back with the finish. Welcome back to Athens, where we have a pitching change, and this time it comes from the Chippewas. Let's break down what was a great outing from Adam Rakic. Seven innings, five hits, five earned, and a lot of it, three of those came on one swing. One walk, seven strikeouts on 95 pitches. He had the Bobcats silenced for five innings. And then, just like that, what was what well, one time looking like it was going to be a phenomenal outing turns into just a pedestrian one. It may still end up being a winning one, depending on how the Bobcats do in these last couple of innings. But they'll have to do the rest of it against Ryan Palmblad, who's got a 2.81 ERA coming into this game. He's appeared in eight games. He's got two saves, 16 innings pitched, giving up nine hits. He's got 19 strikeouts. So it'll be interesting to see if Central Michigan tries the, the six-out save here with Palmblad or if they'll bring in a more dedicated closer. That closer may end up being Nate Ross, number six, who's got three saves on the year. 
We'll see if they ride with Palmblad for the last six outs or if they bring in, if Palmblad will be the setup for Ross. And it's Casper Bauer up to bat. He, he is 0 for 2. He did get hit by a pitch, though, and was able to score a run on that three-run blast from Sturek back in the sixth. 1 and 2. He's quickly behind to Palmblad. That one's low and away. 2 and 2. Temperature has noticeably dropped a little bit here in Athens since the game started. As Casper Berger swings and misses. Starting things out with a strikeout is Ryan Palmblad. He gets Colin Casper Bauer. And that will bring up Mason Minzy, who of course has an RBI double back in the first inning, but has since struck out and flown out. Great pitch inside there. Painted the left inside corner, it seems. And there's another swing and a miss. Quickly behind. So, Paul Brown following the same strategy that Marakic was following for most of that game of getting pitcher or getting hitters behind. And he quickly dispatches him on three pitches. Down goes Mason Minzy. Second strikeout of the game for him. And Ryan Palmblad has come in and is looking to shut things down quickly for the Bobcats. That'll bring up Alec Patino, who singled and brought in a run in his last at-bat. Was able to bring in Roush. And that one gets away from the catcher, but no matter. No runners on base. 1-0 and oh the count to Patino. Patino with a 429 on base percentage, 327 average. Slugging percentage of .365, then an impressive, anytime an OPS is over one, it is, it is good. It's what you're looking for as a hitter. He's got 1.064 coming into today. That took a slight tap off the bat. Ump indicated that it was not off the hand, it was off the bat. I think if he was off the hand, he would have felt it a little bit more with Patino. Two and two the count with two outs. That one is out and away. Three and two, load him up for Patino against Palmblad. The payoff. It is out and away and a walk worked, a two-out walk from Alec Patino. And that'll bring up a man who brought the power in his last at-bat. Will Sturek had a three-run shot the last time he was up at the plate. We saw the first pitch and blasted it 390 feet out to right center field. One for three on the day. Trying to bring the Bobcats back into it once again. And that one was a little bit inside. Off goes Patino. And he's out. Caught. Stealing. It was Dardis, the catcher. Patino's a little shaken up after the play. Great throw from Dardis. He dropped the ball initially, and that's why Patino took off in the first place. I think he might have ended up running into the bag a little bit, potentially, or maybe just a collision with the base runner. But that will do it. For the bottom of the eighth, Patino still down on the field. So we will take a quick break. When we come back with the ninth, we'll hope first we'll hope Patino is okay. And then we'll come back with the final frame, the ninth inning. Can the Bobcats find a comeback? We'll be right back.
back at Athens for the final frame. It is eight to five Central Michigan, and we are in the business inning, the ninth inning. Eight, hit, eight runs on nine hits for the Chippewas and no errors. The Bobcats, five runs on five hits with three errors. It was a quick outing for Dylan Masters, but he sure did his job. Point two innings and a strikeout. Only faced just the two batters. Did his job impressively. But now coming in is Tyler Peck. 519 ERA and five appearances for him. He's given up 13 hits and has six strikeouts. So trying to keep the Bobcats within striking distance before the bottom of the ninth inning. Of course, we'll see Will Sturek, the five hitter, come back up to the plate. Patino is okay. He's back out there at first base. They got Robbie Morgan, the fourth up to bat. He is two for four. And he takes a big hack at that one with nothing but air connecting. One and two the count. Here's the one two. They got him. Got him going around. It didn't look like he did, but the up pointed said he did. And that'll be the second straight strikeout for Robbie Morgan. Now, Dardis, who made that nice play from the catching position to get Patino on that steal attempt. Could have been a big moment in that game if the Bobcats could have had a runner in scoring position with two outs. Any sort of base hit might have, might have cut the deficit by a third. Might have cut it to 8-6, but instead it was a heads-up play from Dardis after he dropped the initial ball. That's what sent Patino off. And Dardis, no panic, no craziness, just picked it up and fired it over. It was a perfect throw as well, right into the glove of... Looked like Michelle was the one who came over and made the play from second. It was right there, and it was a good play to... Continue to keep the deficit at 8-5. Now he has a chance to maybe increase it here from the plate. He already has one two-run home run. And there's a strike to get Peck on the board in this at-bat. Got the strikeout on Morgan. And he'll get it up to 2-2 there. The question asked, the question asked by... Dardis, umpire indicating that uh, it was it caught the corner. 2-2 two -two here from Peck. Cut on, and it will find its way to Casper Bauer. He's going to have to toss it over there. It gets, or no, it was caught. It was caught by Patino. The way, the way that Patino and the second baseman Adams reacted. It, you thought it was going to fly maybe into the Central Michigan dugout or farther. But Casper, I think the Patino was able to dig the ball, but not in time. It was a quick play from Dardis to get over there, and it'll be single for him. So another base runner on for the Chippewas. That'll bring up Eli Stewart, who shows bunt, pulls back, strike. It was a good pitch, high fastball there from Peck. That one's low. One and one, the count with one out. That that last one will put Central Michigan to double digit hits with ten. This one is high in the air up. Right above us, and right in front of us, actually. It'll hit down in the, uh, in the stands. A fair crowd today. Uh, a few fans from Mount Pleasant have made their way down. Uh, 
some maroon and yellow in the crowd, as well as some familiar bobcat green and white as the strikeout there from Stewart, his third of the day, and that'll be Peck's second strikeout. That'll be two outs up for Preston, who walked in his last at-bat, but he's 0 for 3. Besides that, had three straight flyouts. Central Michigan looking to hang on here, trying to continue or get their max season start on a high. That'll be hard hit into right field. Coming onto it is the right fielder, and he will make the play. That's Sturek over there. He does a great job, comes onto it strong, and makes the play. So the Bobcats. Limit the damage in the ninth, no runs, and that'll leave the job outlined simple. They need three runs to keep this one going, or four to walk it off in the bottom of the ninth inning. We'll have all the action here from Bob Bryan Stadium when we return. Back in Athens for the final frame. It is the bottom of the ninth inning. And as we just mentioned before the break, the mission is clear here for the Bobcats. They need three runs to tie things up and maybe keep things going into extra frames. And they need four runs to potentially walk things off. But they're going to need their bats to get going. And this guy, Will Sturek, was the man who really got things going on a potential comeback back in the excuse me, sixth inning, where Patino hit an, Alec Patino hit an RBI single, but was still on base. Him and Casper Bauer were still there. And Will Sturek saw the first pitch and slammed it 390 feet to give the Bobcats a fighting chance. And now he'll have to do something like that again. Bobcats would love him to get on base here, potentially. And he fouls the first pitch back. He has a on-base percentage of 4-4-2. As he hits that one hard into center, it is catchable and will be caught in center by Donahue. The Bobcats are two outs away. Down to their final two outs, or the Chippewas are two outs away as they are doing their jumping jacks in the outfield, celebrating, and I will say their 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 dugout's been very fun today. They've they've been very active, very loud, and they're having fun out there, trying to stay warm probably in an, a chilly day in Athens. And Antle went around there, so that will be strike one. Owen won the count. That one's a strike on the inside corner, so Antle quickly down 0-2. Antle 444 on base percentage. 390 average coming into today, but he is 0 for 3 at the plate. Tag out and a foul out, uh, a fly out, excuse me, and then a strikeout in his last at bat. Here's the 1-2. outside from Palmblad, who did stay in. We, we discussed potentially if maybe Central Michigan was going to opt for a setup and then a, a single inning save, but it looks like they're going to have the save come in here from Palmblad, and he is one out away from obtaining that save. As Bobcats quickly go two outs, and they are down to their final out. Palmblad had two saves coming in. 
He is one out away from picking up his third. And Alex Finney is the man who will have to keep Ohio alive in this one. Inside for ball one. And that one is a beautiful pitch, just right on the outside corner in that quarter of uncertainty for a hitter. Kenny swung at it. Finney, excuse me, swung at it. Really had no shot. Strike one. That one's inside, similar to the first pitch. Two and one the count. Bobcats will look back to that fifth inning, or that third inning, if they can't find a way to back into this one. The five, the two big home runs. Probably going to be the difference in this game. Lovely off-speed pitch there from Palmblad. And the Bobcats are down to their final strike. Here's the 2-2. Hit hard into right center field. It is high, and it is caught in right field by Garrett Navarro. That will do it from Athens. Central Michigan fights hard, and the Bats woke up early early enough to get a victory in game number one of this three game set from Athens. They'll take the win eight to five. The final box score, eight runs, 10 hits and no errors for Central Michigan. Five runs on five hits with three errors for the Bobcats. These two teams are not done doing battle just yet. They've got two more coming up tomorrow at 2 p.m. and then Sunday at 1 p.m. You can hear me and Sam Hyman on the call, or Sam Hyman and I, I gotta be phonetically correct. Phonetic, um, you've got, excuse me, Sam Hyman and I on the call tomorrow, uh, Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern and then it'll be Cedric Granger and I on the call at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sunday for our couple of guys working ESPN. Thank you very much. Um, we will see you live here tomorrow from Bob Brent Stadium. Final once again from a chilly Athens, Central Michigan 8, Ohio 5.